Hi, Richie. Hi, Sin. Hi, everyone. So today, on episode ten of What, Where, Why? I don't know why it was so hard to remember the the name of this, this specific podcast. <laughs> it's a trying time for all of us. <laughs> We're going to talk about the Nightmare Apostle. The Nightmare Apostle. Hmm. Yeah, and what we did is we do have a list that we follow, but then we decided to ask people what enemies they would like um, to see us cover. Yeah. And Rorik is the one that mentioned the Nightmare Apostle. Yeah. Yeah. And interestingly enough, I did have Nightmare Apostle on my list, and it would have been number 17. Oh. Oh, so uh, Nightmare Apostle moves up to 10. Good job. Mm -hmm. Good job, little spider. <laughs> oh my god! No! <laughs> How did you read my mind? <laughs> I'm never doing anything cute again. <laughs> Which is like I'm never doing anything. I'm not breathing. I'm not. I'm not blinking. <laughs> hey, little spider, how are you doing today? <laughs> You know what I imagine? It's just like a, a little cute spider, but he's like cursing at you for some reason, like showing his fists. What fist is a spider? <laughs> just little spider fists. <laughs> Can you imagine if you go to where the Nightmare Apostles are and it's just like all cute little spiders just like cursing at you, just showing their little, their little spider fists? And you're like, that's not very scary. And they're like, wait, wait, wait. for context, Sin just got up. <laughs> um, her brain isn't fully switched on now, so everything is funny to her. It's true, it's true. But it is pretty funny. And then you're just walking around trying not to hurt them because you're like, oh my god, they're tiny and adorable. Like, better not step on them. <sighs> Oh my god, and I just pictured one of the spiders is, um, uh, have you seen that movie? Yes. <laughs> the movie with the, um, it's a comedy, and it's about this guy, but I think he's a, he's a fighter, and, and I think he's also a scam artist. And at some point, there's this meme where he's like, I'll fight anyone in this crowd, especially you. But the person is sitting down, and when they stand up, they're, like, super strong. And he's like, okay, maybe not you. Remember? No, I have no idea what you mean. And then it's, it's um, there's, okay, so what I'm trying to remember is there's this lady. And she just seems annoying, but at the end, turns out she's also a super fighter. Are you sure this wasn't a dream you had? <laughs> She's dressed is like funny because she walks out like in her nightgown, maybe like curlers in her hair all the time, be like, What are you doing? Stop doing that, you know? Like, and that's how I imagine the spider one of the spiders with like curlers in their hair. With what the... hair? <laughs> okay, thank you, Richie. <laughs> so... <laughs> um, so, Richie, what are the nightmare apostles? I feel like what you've described is more interesting. And I'm just going to be downhill from here. So Nightmare <laughs> Apostle is the name for a series of enemies that are all kind of the same template, but with different things stuck on. Mm -hmm. hmm. So it's the name of the spiders that if you run into them, you'll notice they don't have a head. And they they have 10 legs and no head. So a very odd sort of spider. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's also the name of the ones that also have ten legs, but they have a human head. Mm -hmm. And they have access to, like, magic spells and stuff that the headless ones don't have. Mm -hmm. 
And it's also the name of the absolutely gigantic ones that there's one in Mensis, but you can sometimes see them in Chalice Dungeons. Mm -hmm. And they have slightly different names. Like one is Nightmare Apostle and the other one is like Large Nightmare Apostle. Yeah, yeah. That's the large one. Do they have any more names? Mm, I don't think so. I think they just call like Nightmare Apostle, Nightmare Apostle Head, Nightmare Apostle. Okay. Huge. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Richie. Yeah. Don't hang up. But I have to tell you something. <laughs> Do you know what I see when I look at this? What what do you see? It's a spider that's sending you a kiss. Oh, it's like puckering its lips up. Yes! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so cute! Oh my god! Up until now, they were terrifying. <laughs> but now it's just like an emoji spider. It's a spider that wants to fit in, so it's making emoji faces. Mm. Thank you again to everyone who requested this episode. <laughs> Because we're really sticking to, like, the questions you want answered. <laughs> Thank you, Reggie. <laughs> no, hang on. Let, let's, let's look at this. Let's look at this. We're six minutes in. <laughs> and the episode about the spider, we've described the spider for about ten seconds, and the rest has been a movie you don't remember, and <laughs> that the spider looks like an emoji. <sighs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's going. It's going. It's good. So, could you, like, you said they have ten legs. Do spiders normally have ten legs? No, they have eight. They have eight? What has ten legs? Um, nothing. Well, let's Google. What I, has I, I, ten A legs? decapede, I don't know. Crabs! Oh, there you go. They belong to a group of animals called decapods. I didn't know that. Yeah, we learned something. Yeah, so these spiders are also decapods. Well, do you know what I think it it is though? Mm. I think it's that it's eight legs, and then the the front two are technically arms. Because when they do their their like magic attack, they hold their arms up and do little gestures. So I think it's kind of like a scorpion. How how a scorpion's got eight legs, and then the the two claws. Oh, so I was right in the beginning. They do, like, show you their little fist. But, well, they don't have fists. No, but, well, if they have arms, if the front yeah. two are arms, then they have fists. She's like, oh, I'm going to get you. Okay. Um, Richie, let me ask you, is Patches a nightmare apostle? Yeah, he's, um, the, the ones with the heads, they have a weird, like, bowl cut. And if you remove the bowl cut, it's just Patches. So Wait, basically, so it's the same face, but yeah, without basically, the hair? Oh. Yeah, there's basically just like a, a spider with a human head and a bowl cut. If you remove the bowl cut, you get patches. And if you remove the head entirely, you get the other apostles. You know what? Um, the spider looks much better without the bowl cut. Yeah. Well, okay, what, lo what looks better with the bowl cut? That's my question. Well, sometimes it depends. It depends on like <laughs> your face, right? I don't yeah. know. Uh, but this makes me think of like those episodes of America's Next Top Model where it's like, your makeover is, we'll shave it all off. And the girl's like, oh, I don't know about that. And then they shave the girl's, the contestant's head, right? right? And it turns out she's just like so beautiful and gorgeous and she's rocking it. And it's like, oh, wow, this was a great idea. Yeah. And usually those are the most like amazing transformations. Yeah. So this is what it makes me think of. I see. Like great transformation patches. Patches, you are Mets' next up model. <laughs> okay. 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 So where are the spiders? They are in the Nightmare of Mensis. Mm hmm And they're also all over the Chalice Dungeons. And I guess if patches counts, then there's one in the, the lecture hall and they can, I guess, teleport around and end up in Yarnum if they so choose. I'm looking at a picture here 
And I'm not sure what's happening. I'll send it to you. And then there's one followed by this one. Okay, that's um, an extremely rare thing that can happen, which most people never see, even if they do chalices for hundreds of hours, which is that if you leave Patches alive in the main game, if you forgive him after he betrays you, he becomes a, a merchant in the chalice dungeons. He'll drop down from the ceiling and sell you things. But it's like really, really, really rare. Okay. Like I've gotten it like I think twice in oh, five crap. years of playing Bloodborne. I've got patches to shop twice. What's yeah. the point of making that? Literally something nobody will ever see unless you're uh, Richie or Tomb Prospectors or Meth. Um. I think it may just be like it was supposed to be more common and then they just kept cutting the chalice dungeons back. You know what it looks like? It looks like something something we would do where it's like, oh, remember that thing about the koala? But only like five people know about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And normally, is there a fountain there, or no? If oh, you no, kill, Patrick, yeah. If if you okay. kill him, the messenger buff that sells you things appears instead. Is that more common, or no? It's it's, it's if he would have appeared, but you killed him, you get okay. that. Okay. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Um. Also, uh, sorry, I forget if you mentioned this, but. Patches will talk to you in the game uh, to give you the tonsil stone. That's why I said he can, like, teleport around Yanam somehow. Oh, okay. Okay. But do you think it's literally Patches, or is it supposed to be, like, a metaphor? What, what would it be a metaphor for? <laughs> a metaphor for Patches. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what you're saying is that, okay, can you just explain to me the lore behind this? If let's say, hmm, like, <sighs> do you want me to explain the whole patches mechanic to you? Because yes, please. Okay. The answer you would normally give is you'd say it's when you enter forbidden woods. The trigger okay. is actually a bit more complicated than that because of the way areas are set up. It will just say when, when you leave Yarnum for forbidden woods, right? Okay. What happens is that activates like a flag where from that point on the next window you go to will have patches behind it. It doesn't matter what window it is. Oh, okay, right. So he, yeah, yeah. he can show up at Gilbert's window. He can show up at like Gascoigne's window. He can show up anywhere. But the thing is, because most people leave for Forbidden Woods and just go to Forbidden Woods... Pretty much, like, 95% of people encounter patches at a specific window in Forbidden Woods. But you can get him anywhere, and if you get him anywhere and then go to Forbidden Woods, you actually get dialogue from the NPC there that a lot of people don't hear. And it's this its this old lady saying, can you please just leave an old woman be? Mm -hmm. But yeah, so but basically what's happening is patches is somehow able to just, like, appear behind any window. Mm hmm so that's interesting because Patches is obsessed with the amygdala. Yeah. He worships them as a god, yeah. Yeah, and the amygdala can teleport you to places, right? Yeah, yeah. And Patches is like, he's also in the nightmare frontier. Yeah. So do yeah. you think the amygdala could have teleported him? And um, Possibly, yeah. But like, it looks like he can come and go from the nightmare at will. Because you just, you just keep running into him. That's a good point. Yeah, he's behind any window. Then he's in the lecture hall, which is in the nightmare. Uh -huh. Then he's in the actual nightmare frontier. And then he's also in the chalices. So it looks like he can just be anywhere, basically. And it fit it fits with like like you were saying, like the amygdala or a spider thing, and they can like teleport around, they can appear anywhere, so so I just had this vision because you say patches can teleport into any house, basically. Yeah. But also, it doesn't mean that the hunter will talk to that specific house first. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I just had a 
vision of Patch as being like, so he teleports to a house, right? Yeah. And then the family's just having dinner and a giant spider appears on the dinner table. And Patch is like, <laughs> guys, guys, don't panic. All I need, you see that guy? He's coming toward the house. I just need to talk to him. And the family's just like frozen. And then as the hunter is about to come to the window, he turns left and Patch is like, oh, God damn it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> So then Patches teleports to the next house. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like yes. like some like some guy taking, you know, a bubble bath and then Patches just teleports like in the bathroom and the guy's like, what the? And Patches like, sorry, sorry, I'm so sorry. Listen, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just need to talk to that guy over there pointing to the window. <laughs> and the hunter's <laughs> coming closer and turns right. Patches like, oh, God damn it. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. I'm not like this. I just, I just really need to talk to him. And then this keeps happening. <laughs> <laughs> I am a fan of the visions of Saint Sinclair. <laughs> uh, thank you, Richie. <laughs> um, okay, so I think. I think we pretty much covered the what and where, right? Um, I guess, yeah. Oh, and bell maidens can summon them. Oh, tell us about that. That's what I just said. Bell maidens can summon them. <laughs> where? Where can they summon them? In the chalices. You like run into okay. bell maidens, and they they infinitely summon the glowing red nightmare apostles till you kill them. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Thank you. So now, why are the apostles? What, what, okay, why don't you? Why, why do you think they are? Oh, the tables have turned. No, I think I I think like we want we want your input. <laughs> um, so maybe the nightmare apostles are humans who, instead of transforming into beasts, transformed yeah. into spiders. Yeah, and maybe maybe they had some that amygdala blood, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And you think, like, the game may have multiple other, like, there may be precedent in the game for people turning into spiders. I don't know. Is there? Okay, the game is five years old and it's not very long. Can you think of significant spiders in Bloodborne? Patches? I don't know. It just patches on the giant spider. Think, think <laughs> through, like play, yeah, okay, play okay. through in your head how you progress through Bloodborne, and think to yourself: Is there a significant encounter with a spider? Do you, you don't mean the amygdala, do you? No. Okay. Is there significant? Okay, I got. Uh, let me think. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, like, I'm not going to remember now. My brain's going to specifically block that part. Oh, okay. Th- but, think think yeah, Dignity yeah, City. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's not a spider. That's a caterpillar. What does? What is her full name? Rom the Vecchius Caterpillar. <laughs> I think you're playing the Russian version. <laughs> I just, I just don't feel like, even like yeah. uh, the the children of Rome or whatever, they don't feel like the same type of spiders, you know. No, like, they're not, but they they're a kind of spider. But like, like I see what you're saying. I see that like you're saying, oh well. Rom turned into a quote a quote spider, and then there's like. <laughs> <laughs> Bloodborne theory. Rom is a spider. Let's look at the evidence. Her name is Rom the Vacuous Spider. Just before you encounter her, there's a note that mentions a spider. Could this be the same spider that Rom is? And then her children that we talked about that could have been like scholars transformed by the yeah. 
yeah power of arcane magic yeah um but what i was saying is it doesn't have to be specifically this like you have people turning into beasts like and and whatever and snakes and i don't know what yeah you don't need to have a human to turn into something that looks like a spider to be like oh maybe people over there turned into a turn it to a spider you you could like just like assume it without even around being in the game yeah but I, i'm saying like there's more precedent for people turning into spiders in the game yeah you're right yeah yeah i was actually yeah. agreeing with you yeah yeah, yeah. but you're just so <laughs> belligerent <laughs> fuck you reggie bully 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 <laughs> what was that Sounds like E.T. has paid us a visit again. <laughs> oh, thank you, Richie. Thank you, Sad. <laughs> okay, so why do you think they are? I think they're people who turned into spiders. But how? The same way the other people turned into, like, weird things. They, like, imbibed a bunch of blood and fucked around with the arcane and then they turned into a spider. Okay. Do we want to talk about the the line that implies the old woman is Patch's mother that's like not in there anymore? We actually talked about it in This is the problem when you record 200 podcasts <laughs> that you have can't remember. We know what we've talked about but not where or when. I'm pretty sure it was not so bloodborne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, tell us, tell us about it. There's a line that's the old woman used to have that's deleted now, and she keeps saying she keeps talking to you. This is after she starts going mad under the red moon, and she says like, "Oh, the doctor's coming to fix you up. Don't worry." And she's talking. To, look, she does this already. She talks to you like you're her child. She has like mummy well, mummy will fix it, it'll be okay. Like let let mummy look after you. Um and the end of that line, which is not used in the game, but was it got as far as being recorded, is she says, um she says that her child's name is my sweet little patches. How did you say it in Japanese? Kawaii Pachi chan. Kawaii Pachi chan. Oh, you're cute. Uh, yeah. So this makes me wonder about the relationship of Patches and the amygdala. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, now that we talked, I think it must have been some weird amygdala blood. Cause it's like when you you know, when you go to the nightmare um sorry, to the to the woods. Yeah. Nightmare woods. <laughs> You have snakes, and people have snake-related transformations a little bit there. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, people who seem to be more like... Like in the healing church, they seem to be more like cleric beast-related transformations. Yeah, yeah. But do do you think it needs to be amygdala blood specifically? Because it could just be like the old blood in general lets you do this. I feel like, but then why would it not make patches into patches the beast, cleric beast, or whatever? You know. Okay, we've discussed this before. <laughs> How so? The the different blood, like there's not like oh, this is the this is the beast blood, and this is the kin blood. It's the same blood. They, they like experiment with it and they refine it in different ways. But what happens is you take in the blood and then depending on how, how much wisdom and, and knowledge you have and how enlightened you are, you turn into different things. So the same blood can make you into kin of the cosmos and can also make you into a cleric beast. That's why Lawrence is turning into a beast because he presumably believed he his mind would expand and he would become one with the cosmos. But he didn't. Yeah. So I guess it would be like levels of enlightenment. Like if you have five insight, you turn into a cleric beast. If you have ten insight, you turn into a spider <laughs> or something. Yeah, no, I think like, it is it is yeah. that because Patches hangs out in the research hall. Uh-huh. Which kind of implies like he was some sort of scholar. 
So he was like fucking around and he like he started to change and he he changed into yeah, he's like a he sort of got halfway to it. He's like not quite as smart as Ron, basically. Okay, I guess I guess we covered it. But you didn't talk about why they're in Mensas. We're just t- talking about patches. Oh, okay. Why why are they in Mensas? Mm. I mean, they might be the they we're might be the Mensas. Years, they might be the Mensas scholars. <laughs> Sorry, go on. They might be the Mensas scholars. Like oh, the yeah, the ones true. that didn't die, like they might have turned into the spiders. Oh my god, yeah. You see the problem with playing a five year old game and recording two hundred podcasts on it is that like <laughs> you you get a lot of information. <laughs> it's hard to keep track of all of it. I think the difference with you is that you're just a little smarter than me <laughs> a lot. So you I actually have all the information in your no, brain. You, no, no, no. It's it's you're the smart one, but your brain has more than one thing in it. <laughs> so you're like Bloodborne, but there has to be a little spot for Reborn. There has to be a spot for America's Next Top Model. There has to be a spot for RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> oh. mm. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Richie. Is there anything else? Um. I don't know because I think they they're largely incoherent. Okay. Also, the name uh, Apostle. Yeah. Do you think it's just because Apostle is like ooh name, or is it a berserk thing? No, I think it's like Patches is literally an apostle of the because he's like worshiping Amygdala. Mm-hmm. So I think the idea is that they're scholars who are like they are like they're literally apostles of the nightmare. Like they worship it and they follow it, and they've turned into these things. We didn't talk about the the genesis of them in the fighting fantasy books. Explain what's a fighting fantasy book again. Okay, fighting fantasy was a line of books from the eighties, and I think they last to the early nineties. And they were something between a choose your own adventure book and a single player RPG. So you would go through like a story and you would come to uh, points that would say like, you know, if you take the left path, turn to this page, right path, turn to this page. If you talk to the person, turn to this page. But at the same time, you were expected to keep track of like an inventory and how many hit points you had. So it would Mm -hmm. say like you come to this thing and like if you have the rope in your inventory, you can turn to this page. And if you have like the knife in the inventory, go to this page. And sometimes you would act. it, It had like a rudimentary combat system. Mm-hmm. So it's like you encounter the monster and then you would be expected to roll dice and like try to beat like certain scores and then it would you would either die or survive. Mm-hmm. And like your hit points carried over. So like if you you might try to get through the book by having a bunch of fights, but then you might get wounded, so you might die later on. So it became it's mm-hmm. kinda like that. And um Miyazaki explicitly cites them. So like we know for a fact he did read them and that they were an influence on his design. Yeah, so one of the books, um, it's called Out of the Pit, that has an enemy in it called the Spider-Man that is just straight up patches from Bloodborne. Like, it looks it looks like fan art of patches. <laughs> I know why they have ten extremities instead of eight, Richie. Why? Because this one has eight, so it's like we can't rip it off completely. <laughs> That's true, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you can see, like, it's, for reference, like, it is, it's like a spider's body with, like, a bald human man's head attached to it. Like, it looks exactly like Patches. Yeah. And um, do you want to read the origin of the Spider-Man? Okay. It is rumored that Spider-Men were originally demon worshippers who, at one time, boldly asked their demonic master to bestow upon them the powers of the dreaded death spiders in order to more efficiently capture unwary souls. The demon granted their wish, but with its twisted sense of humor, it did not enlarge its servants to the size of a death spider, but instead shrunk them to the size of a real spider. (laughs) Um. Okay, but like, What's the what's the important part of that? Oh, the important part is that remember how I was talking about how we could encounter cute little spiders with their fists? That's what happened here. Yeah, but 
they were worshippers of something that turned them into a spider. The amygdala? Well, I think I think that's where I got the idea from. Um, they're also they're linked in the um you know how there's a lot of weird shit about Murgo's wet nurse, where like it has a bunch of different names and they moved it around. Mm-hmm. They're connected to the wet nurse. Internally, they're called like the she's called the demon of death and darkness, and they're called the devotees of death and darkness. They seem to be the um yeah, her like like they followed her or something. Initially, like way back when she was a bigger deal, like the shadows of Yarnum were her like servants, yeah. Because her arms are also like very spidery or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and she's covered in like those the 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 pendants and bracelets and things yeah. that look a lot like what they're wearing. So, mm-hmm. yeah, mm, yeah. Okay, thank you, Richie. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Not really. Okay. Uh, so, uh, do the outro, Richie! That was, eventually, <laughs> an episode about the Nightmare Apostles. <laughs> Sin, where can people find you? They can find me in my house. Drink Don't say that! Out. Well, I am in my house. <laughs> they come to my house. <laughs> no, you said, where can they find me? Like, if you're looking for me, I'm at home. I'm not going yeah. anywhere in quarantine. No. <laughs> Richie got really concerned there. <laughs> Shit, is she going to sing her address now? <laughs> oh my god, that's so sweet, Richie. Thank you. Thank you for looking out for my well-being. <laughs> I do what I can. It's like, Richie's feeling now what my boyfriend feels every day where it's like, is she gonna survive for today? Yeah, every, t- every time you pick up, like, a glass, every time you have to go downstairs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm. Where can people find you, Richie? Here, on this video. <laughs> Thank you, Richie. That's quite all right, Sam. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And see you next time. And next time we will discuss... Mm. (laughs) The fluorescent flower suggested by Gordon. Oh, okay. A little enthusiasm, Richie? Yay! Woo!